I'm Dr. David Nowell, clinical neuropsychologist. A few days ago we considered the time horizon and how that varies as a function of brain development and maturity. The ability to imagine a future version of myself and then organize my current behavior in service of that self. In this video I want to consider the art of extending our will through time and give you a couple of strategies for improving your capacity to do that. Long before there was hashtag YOLO, there was hashtag if it feels good, do it, which sounds like the very apotheosis of hedonism. But I actually would like to rehabilitate this phrase and to suggest that this may be the highest moral calling for any adult. The ability to think deeply, what would feel sustainably good, and then to have the courage to do it. It's not enough to know what would feel good right now. I also have to imagine this future version of myself tomorrow, next week, a year from now. I have to consider my future athletic goals, academic goals, relational goals, health goals. Philosopher Robert Gruden called this the art of extending our will through time, imagining this future version of ourself and organizing our current behavior in service of that self and those goals. I know folks in my practice and maybe my own life from time to time who know exactly what would feel good, but then have trouble doing it. The boring parts, the hard parts, the parts where I don't feel like I have the skills. I want to suggest a couple of strategies for supporting your ability to project your will through time. One of them is called pre-commitment. When an ADHD coach or counselor convinces a client that what would really help their brain is to take up an exercise program and the client says, you've sold me. I'll swing by the house after work and pick up my gym bag. That's great, but I just want to point out that nobody in the history of humankind has ever swung by the house and picked up a gym bag. That's not a thing. Pre-commitment means putting your gym bag in the car in the morning. It means at 8 o'clock thinking about your 5.30 p.m. self and asking, what do I want for that future self? Pre-commitment is determining in advance how much money is just right for your budget at the casino, leaving the credit cards at home and taking that amount of cash to the casino. Pre-commitment is planning your snacks and meals in advance and then packing your refrigerator full of snacks and meals on the weekend, thinking about what your Thursday self wants for a snack. Pre-commitment means paying in advance for eight sessions with a trainer. Now another strategy to help us project into the future is called implementation intention. Dr. Catherine Milkman and her colleagues at the Wharton School used this strategy to increase flu vaccination rates within an organization. In her study, one group of employees received an email that said, hey guys, here's some dates for a flu shot clinic. Another group of employees in this study was asked to sign up for a date, and then a third group was asked to sign up for a date and a time. Can you guess which group was more likely to follow through? It was this one. Something about imagining yourself next Tuesday at 10.30, no, two, no, 1.30 helps us actually Almost like a sports psychologist asks you to think through your golf swing, think through your baseball swing. Doing the little muscular movements in advance actually helps us when it comes time to actually do it. So tomorrow, I've got a lacrosse game. Don't get home until 8 p.m. I don't want to stay up tomorrow doing my homework. What I want to do is to do my homework in study hall tomorrow, but I know what's going to happen. I'm going to walk into study hall, and my buddies are going to say, hey, let's fold a piece of paper into a triangle and thump it back and forth for a minute. So you know what you want for yourself, yes. And you know what will be a likely obstacle, that's right. Then let's go ahead and create an implementation intention script. Let's imagine this future version of yourself and write it out like a movie script. Let's imagine that tomorrow, two o'clock, as you walk into study hall, when you sit down, you'll count on your left hand, one through five, while you greet your friends. Hey Tyler, hey Skyler, what up Preston? And then with your right hand, you'll hold the assignment sheet, hovering above the table, quickly reviewing the assignments, and then you'll work through the assignments in the order that you had them. Notice how specific I'm being here. I'm imagining a future version of myself doing this thing with my left and my right hand, and then working through the assignments in a specific order. So do it with me. Let's imagine it's tomorrow. It's 2 o'clock. As you walk into study hall, you count to 5 with your left hand. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Skylar. What up, Preston? And then with your right hand, you hold the assignment sheet, you review the assignments, and then quickly you begin to work through them in the order that you had them that day. Another way to support implementation intention, if you're a counselor 
or a coach is called a PowerPoint storyboard. But in the interest of time, I'm going to hold off and I'll explain PowerPoint storyboard in a separate video. My hero when it comes to all this stuff is Odysseus. He's a character from Greek mythology who, like a lot of us, had a split within himself. On the one hand, he loved to do his job. His job was to get his boat across the sea. But on the other hand, he loved hearing the song of the sirens. To at least have the option to hear the song of the sirens, these half-bird, half-woman creatures with beautiful singing voices. Oh, P.S. They live near the shallow water, and you tended to crash your boat and die. But again, beautiful singing voices. On this morning, he reflected deeply. What would feel good? And then he decided to implement that intention. He decided that what he really wants for himself is to do his job, to get his boat across the sea, so he ties himself to the mast so he can't change his mind. He limits his future self's options. And then he puts wax in his sailors' ears so they can't even hear the song of the sirens. He said, you know what, if I only live once, I want to reflect deeply on what feels good. It feels good to get my boat across the sea because when I get there a bit early, they wave their red rags and they say, Odie, sometimes he gets paid a bonus. And then he went ahead and he did it. He tied himself to the mast. I doubt you encounter half-bird, half-woman creatures with beautiful singing voices, but you and I do encounter sirens that make us crash our little boats. So I would challenge you to go ahead and think about a future version of yourself. Finances, health, relationship. And ask, what could I do today in the service of that future version of myself? To project yourself into the future. If you're interested in this, you can check out a live webinar or a pre-recorded webinar through PESI. And if you're in Australia, if all goes to plan, I hope to be there in October, you can check that out at tatratraining.com. Thanks a lot.